The Question, Chapter 3, Part 7. What is the point of education? Neil Postman wrote a book called The End of Education, in which he used the word end to question the demise of education. And he also used the word end to mean the purpose of education. If we don't know the end, the purpose of education, it could mean the end, demise of education. David Hicks wrote a book called Norms and Nobility, in which he argues that the point of education is to make nobility a normative practice. In other words, for the classical Christian educator, it is normal for students to end their formal schooling as noble creatures. This is the point of education. When I talk to parents about students graduating from middle school to high school, and even more often commencing the college experience, I rarely hear a question posed in light of the previous paragraph. The conversation is always about transcripts and scholarships and employment and athletics, or it is about a fear that their child will get caught up in the more decadent forms of dorm life. I rarely hear that their son attended this college because he was so excited about his email communications with the science professor that he couldn't wait to sit at her feet. Or their daughter chose this school because the students embody the idea of virtuous citizenry. Or their son told them he is attending their alma mater because he wants to become the same kind of noble man they are. Will any of these kinds of goals prevent their child from getting a professional degree or skill in a trade? I don't think so. When Shakespeare has Portia ask Brutus if she dwells, but in the suburbs of your good pleasure, Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, Act 2, Scene 1, classically trained students know that she is asking the only question most of us care about. Do you really love me or am I just a convenient pleasure? Do we really love our children, or are they trophies to display in competitions? The truth is that we love our children more than we seem to be allowed to admit, let alone act upon. Most readers of this book want their children to be noble creatures, to do things well, to love abundantly, to live in humility, and to elevate beauty. But then we try to achieve it through a system that inculcates utility, pragmatism, and conformity. Often we are content with the status quo out of fear or ignorance or of alternatives. After all, we know about the compulsory education laws. Our ancestors determined that collectively, our children are more members of the state than citizens of heaven. I love my children. Therefore, I declare they are heirs to a kingdom, servants to the people and brothers of the king's son. Of course, they will receive an education formed by these presuppositions. I declare that for eternity, they will pursue beauty, goodness, and truth. Of course, they will receive an education developed toward this end. Remember the trouble about learning to ask questions is that you'll ask questions. No more accepting the status quo. No more doing what you're told. Know thyself and be prepared for a life of conflict. C.S. Lewis called man a glorious ruin. The more questions we ask, the more ruins we find in need of repair. But the entire adventure is glorious. And we'll start part two, the dialectical arts, in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.